Welcome to the Oracle Cloud VMware Solution Deployment Demo. In this video, we will demonstrate the deployment of a VMware software-defined data center on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Oracle Cloud VMware Solution is a joint partnership between Oracle and VMware to provide users the best of VMware in the Oracle Cloud. Oracle Cloud VMware Solution includes vCenter, vSphere, NSXT, vSAN, and VMware ACX as part of the solution. VMware ACX is key to enabling hybrid cloud. Before I start the demo, I want to give you a quick overview of the supporting logical constructs that Oracle Cloud VMware Solution is dependent. Let's start with a region. A region according to Oracle is a localized geographic area. The physical locations within a region are called availability domains, and each availability domain is made up of one or more data centers located within that region. These are similar to availability zones in some other hyperscaler cloud services. Within each availability domain are groupings of hardware and infrastructure which collectively make up a fault domain. Each availability domain contains three fault domains, which together provide anti-affinity locations within that availability domain. Moving on to the most important and basic building block of Oracle Cloud VMware solution and Oracle Cloud infrastructure, which is the virtual cloud network. This is a region-wide network container. The VCN is much like a virtual private cloud or VPC in other hyperscalers. It should be assigned a large enough block of IP addresses for services deployed in it. One of the properties of a VCN is the automatic internal routing of the objects inside the VCN. So here's an imaginary router in the VCN to show that it has routing capabilities. We'll color it VMware Navy Blue. Logically, it sits outside the availability domains. In fact, let's just stretch it across all the AD. The VCN address range is the overall scope of IP addresses, but to connect anything inside the VCN, we need a network. The early versions of subnets from the VCN SuperNet only spanned one availability zone like this. Let's connect the AD-wide subnet to our VCN. One more thing, the AD-wide subnet spans all the fault domains within the AD. Since launch, things have continued to develop across the Oracle Cloud. And one of those developments brought us the VCN wide subnet. Just like the AD wide version, we define this with an IP subnet, and it too gets an uplink into the VCN routing space. This is where we typically deploy Oracle Cloud infrastructure virtual machines. In a typical network diagram, we will show these virtual machines connected to a network. So let's do that here. But this is an Oracle Cloud VMware solution demo. So let's take a look at those bare metal hosts, which brings vSphere into the picture. We'll just show a single host for clarity here. While we are here, we might as well take a look at the host specifications. At time of this recording, the standard Oracle Cloud infrastructure host is a 2CPU, 52-core bare metal server with 768 gigabytes of memory with 51.2 terabytes of storage. There is a three-host minimum with a maximum of 64 hosts per vSphere cluster. In the demo, you will see that the deployment wizard will take care of deploying the ESXi host for you. Now the host needs some form of network connectivity, but there's an issue here. The subnets we saw earlier were purely layer three. They encapsulated the Oracle Cloud infrastructure virtual machine traffic and provide all the network capabilities needed to forward that traffic, but don't offer layer two capabilities. We need something which does support layer two and Oracle Cloud provides us with a special construct which supports things like ESXi and vSAN that need layer two. The VLAN behaves in much the same way as a subnet, but with additional layer two support. Currently, VLANs can only span a single availability domain, so any connectivity between ADs has to be at layer 3. With this, we have the foundations of an Oracle Cloud VMware solution. To support all the software-defined data center components and connectivity, we will need 10 VLANs. For the full stack, we'll need a vCenter and an NSXT deployment. And these are taken care of in the Oracle Cloud VMware solution bring up process. We'll also need connectivity for these elements from within the SCDC too. To complete this corner of the picture, we'll need to connect the VLANs into the VCN's routing fabric. At present, as the VLANs cannot span multiple availability domains, neither can the SDDCs, but we can deploy SDDCs in more than one availability domain within the region. And should we need to, more than one SDDC in the same availability domain. The Oracle Cloud allows the deployment of a number of external connectivity options into a VCN without which there is no external access. For example, the internet gateway allows inbound and outbound access for devices with a dedicated public IP address. And the NAT gateway offers outbound internet access to devices without. 
In order to access these and other gateways, entries are needed in the DCN routing table before the resources can use them. Now that we are done with the administrative work, let's proceed with deploying the Oracle Cloud VMware solution instance. I've made sure I'm in the correct region in which I want to deploy the SDDC. Moving to the upper left, I click on the burger icon. Under Hybrid, VMware Solution is where existing Oracle Cloud VMware Solution instances can be found and where new VMware SDDCs can be deployed. The wizard is straightforward. Name the SDDC. Confirm that you want to deploy VMware ACX or not. In this instance, I will deploy VMware ACX with a license level of advanced. If you choose not to deploy VMware ACX during the initial build of the SDDC, you cannot install it later. The version of vSphere to be deployed is also selected. How long do you plan on keeping the cluster around? There are a few options here to choose from. Pick what is appropriate for your use case. How many hosts? I will go with the minimum for demo purposes. The prefix name of the ESXi host is auto-filled by the name of the SDDC. I will leave that as is. You may customize if you wish to. Utilizing SSH keys is the preferred method over passwords that Oracle requires when connecting to ESXi hosts via SSH. Depending on the operating system and or SSH client you're using, the process to generate an SSH key pair varies. I have a Mac, so I used a terminal application to generate my key. Selecting the AD, I will deploy the SDDC in. Remember, SDDCs cannot span multiple availability domains. On to the network page. Select the virtual cloud network the SDDC will be deployed in. The 10 subnets for vSphere 7 will be created during this process. Next, I will enter a SDDC CIDR that will be used to provision the subnet and VLANs the SDDC will utilize. There is a minimum of a slash 21 required. Scrolling past the subnet and VLANs that will be provisioned from the slash 21 that I just entered above, Last is the SDDC Workload Network. This is the first port group that will be created in NSXT for your VMware virtual machines. Let's review. All the information that was entered in the basic information page is displayed along with the networking that was just entered. This is the final review before kicking off the deployment. Now I will build the SDDC. I'm just scrolling through, looking at the detailed list of networking objects as they are being created as part of the bring up process. During this portion of the deployment process, if you experience an error like I did, don't panic. Try clicking the retry provisioning button as I have so the deployment process can continue. In real time, this portion of the deployment took just over two hours. No more data entry is required. And once the status bar reaches 100%, the deployment of the SDC will be complete. This concludes the video on deploying the Oracle Cloud VMware solution. To learn more, visit the Oracle Cloud VMware solution page on VMware.com.